Last time on Sailing Balachandra, we shared with you what it costs to live aboard and cruise full-time in the Caribbean per month. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dan. And I'm Noelle. And we're Sailing Bella Chandra. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, just go below this channel, look for the big red subscribe button, press that button. This week's video is about Zeus, actually. We're going to talk about bringing dogs with you as you cruise in the Caribbean, and whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, our experiences, how much we love Zeus, and uh, how difficult it is or isn't to have a dog while you travel on a boat. Zeus has kind of become our little boating community's mascot. Every boat that we go to visit, he comes along with us and he is just loved by all the cruisers in our little small community that we have created for ourselves. He is always so excited to go and visit other boats and to sniff around and explore. If you just say a friend's name or a boat name and just ask him if he wants to go and visit, he's just like, tail up, ears up. He's like, yeah, let's get in the dinghy and go. Probably Zeus's number one favorite thing to do is go to shore. Uh, there's certain words we can't use, but the dinghy to him is like this magical transportation device that gets him from the boat to where he can smell and pee on stuff. So he gets pretty excited if we go near the dinghy, or if we mention the dinghy, or if we even like just go out and sit in the dinghy. He assumes that this is his time and he's right there and ready to go every time. And he loves going to shore. As we bring the dinghy closer to shore, he starts to cry and whine and scream because he gets that excited about it and uh, that's his little treat I guess. I do love Zeus. I'm crazy about him. He puts a smile on my face every morning I wake up. He's there to greet me. He's giving me kisses. He loves to cuddle. He's great. Good morning Zeus. Where are we? West Palm Beach baby. It was really important for Dan that we got a dog that did not shed because the hair could get into the bilge and he was really concerned about that. So when I had asked if we could get a dog, he said only if they're hypoallergenic and they don't shed. He gets pretty excited when we catch a fish and bring it on board. He doesn't know what they are, but he thinks they're pretty cool. He likes the smell and he checks out the blood and I think he kind of, you know, like a typical dog, just wants to get in there. If you like dogs and you're planning to go cruising and you're going to get a dog, my number one advice would be to get the dog as a puppy and raise the dog on the boat. That's what we did with Zeus and he has very little trouble going to do his business on deck. It doesn't make a big mess, probably because he's a small dog. The rain typically washes the deck all the time. The sun dries out his little poos. It doesn't really like make much of a mess at all. So we don't mind if he goes on deck. I've heard of a lot of people that don't sail more than just a few hours because they're worried about their dog getting to the bathroom. So that opens us up to doing longer passages. Sailing with the dogs has its advantages and disadvantages for sure. I'm really glad that we had gotten Zeus as a puppy and raised him on board for right from the get-go so that he was comfortable with his surroundings and he knew that this was home, like he called the boat home. He's actually really quite happy on the boat. Now, I kind of regret starting our cruising adventure with Zeus being so young only because I was constantly worried about him and his needs and I, I, I felt bad because he was always so hyper and always so roaring to go and get out there and do things. I don't know, I always feared for his safety. 
Zeus seems to get pretty nervous when he hears noises on board, especially the winches or when the jib is out and it makes the winches creak or any of the locks makes noise. He kind of freaks out at that moment and then comes looking for comfort or solace while we're sailing. He sometimes kind of cuddles in around my legs while I'm at the wheel. These days what we do is we put him in his little doggy backpack and hang him here off of the bimini or we might wear the doggy backpack while we're sailing with Zeus and it gives him a lot of comfort so that's really good. I'm doing a nice calm downwind sail. He seems to be in better spirits. He'll run around on deck. He might go up to the bow and back and with the sails out full like that it's not so much of a danger for him but we did a lot of stressful passages upwind coming down from Canada where we were into some serious conditions and Zeus for some reason when he hears a noise or gets scared might bolt towards the bow and you know there's waves crashing over the bow and the, you know we might be tacking and the sails sweeping the deck and things like that and so we're always nervous that Zeus is going to get himself into trouble and this was before we put up our lifeline netting. There was a couple times he did get away and got up towards the bow and got splashed by a wave it would come back completely soaking wet with salt water. I highly recommend that if you're going to have a dog on board you want to get this lifeline netting. A lot of dogs can be trusted not to fall overboard they seem to have pretty good balance but it gives you the peace of mind as a cruiser that you're not going to just lose your dog overboard and there's been a couple times where we couldn't find Zeus and assumed that maybe we lost him and it's a pretty scary moment you don't want to have that. And I think it's really important to train your dogs to be alone and not take them everywhere with you and just leave them on board and just run away and just leave them there. I, I can't do that with Zeus. He's been spoiled right from the get-go and I'm always worried about the heat. I'm always worried about if it's too cold. I'm always worried about everything. And the first few times we have left him alone on board, his anxiety would just go sky high and he would just so then Dan and I stopped leaving him on the boat alone, which was a huge mistake because now we can never leave him alone. I find that a lot of my time and energy is going towards him and I'm constantly focusing on what he needs and how to make him comfortable and ensure that he's having a great time. I wish that I was able to leave Zeus alone on the boat and go off and do my thing, but like I said, Dan and I never did get into that. We've just been dragging him everywhere we go and unfortunately I'm the one that he's attached to so I'm not really enjoying myself when I go out with Zeus. So bringing Zeus down from Canada wasn't too difficult when we entered the United States. Like Canada, the United States, it's never a problem bringing pets across the border. The only difficulty I think in the United States was bringing Zeus out, you know, to restaurants or into public places where you can't typically take a dog. So we kind of expected that. One thing we didn't expect was that we wouldn't be allowed to bring him to the beach. In Canada, we're allowed to bring our dogs to the beach. We do it all the time. But I guess in the United States, it's kind of an issue. So yeah, getting to the Bahamas wasn't too bad. A lot of countries in the Caribbean are pretty lenient when it comes to pets. Uh, the Bahamas wasn't bad. We did have to do a registration form in advance and send it in. There was a fee. Uh, we found a guy in Florida that could fast track for us because we didn't have our registration done early enough. So that worked out for us. And uh, from there on, it's been pretty easy. Every island that we've brought him to, we got him in either with just having our registration form done in advance or having them just scan his health certificate. I know in the Bahamas we went ahead and got a new health certificate made in anticipation of going to Turks and Caicos. We had heard that in the British Islands that it's much more difficult to bring your pet in there, but we ended up going to the Dominican Republic instead and we didn't try to bring him into a British island at all. We have yet to figure that one out. But at the Dominican Republic it was pretty easy. In other countries you go to in the Caribbean, like here in Grenada for instance, it was very easy. We brought him in, they saw the dog, they scanned the health form, it was like five minutes, no fee and we were in. So far here in Grenada, we haven't had any issues taking Zeus anywhere. There's only been one restaurant during our entire five months here that had policies against having dogs. 
Usually we're okay taking the dog to the pubs and having a drink and such and the dog being with us, accompanying us while we're at the pub. And the staff doesn't seem to mind. And naturally when you have a pet on board once in a while you might need the vet, especially if you're traveling between countries and they need updated health forms, rabies vaccinations or whatever depending on that particular country's requirements. Uh, we haven't had too much trouble finding vets here in the Caribbean so far. We've talked to several. We actually only took him to one so far and that was in the Bahamas and we took him there so that he could have an updated health certificate and to get neutered so that we could bring him to the British Islands which we haven't actually done yet. We did find that the vets here in the Caribbean are much cheaper than the vets back in Canada. However, some of the tests that we can get back in Canada, like the rabies titer test, is much more easily done in North America than here due to mailing and the fact that they don't have those laboratories here in the Caribbean. We run into quite a few cruisers who have dogs on board and Zeus kind of makes doggy friends with a lot of them. But surprisingly, there's quite a number of cruisers with dogs. It's pretty common. So, I mean, you know, uh, if you're wondering how often people make that choice and how they're doing with their dogs on board, it doesn't seem to be a big problem. I heard a lot of stories about restrictions and problems taking your dog to the Caribbean, but honestly, we haven't had those problems so far. I think all in all, I would recommend getting a dog and bringing them to the Caribbean. However, there's pros and there's cons, and you want to consider everything really well before you make that decision. So that's the end of this week's video about traveling with your dog on a yacht and all of the logistics and everything we deal with having a dog on board. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and you haven't subscribed, just go below this video and look for the big red subscribe button, press that button. And if you want, you can leave a like or a comment below. And if you haven't checked out our Patreon page, it's always a good time to do so. Patreon's a place where you can give back if you like what we do and you want to support us. Thanks, see you later.